Hey guys, welcome to the show. Hello, Michael. Hi, Helen. Hi. So I'm really excited to discuss with you a lot about the Web Summit. How is your experience and what exactly your company do? Yes, really good experience um, at Web Summit. Uh, this is really a good platform to make the investor, the entrepreneurship, and uh, as well as enterprise uh, company, uh, which can get together and have a great networking. So uh, I think that uh, I would like to introduce our company first, DataOcean AI. So DataOcean AI was founded in 2005, and we had almost 20 years experience in AI data services. Uh, we, co we have already covered almost 100 countries around the world, and uh, could cover like 200 languages with our services. Our uh, Product and services include two parts. One is off-the-shelf data sets. Uh, we had almost 1,500 off-the-shelf data sets offering to our customer. Uh, as well as we had uh, data services, which including data collection, data annotation, and model uh, evolution. So uh, I'm so glad to talk with you today. It's my pleasure, guys. Um, when I look into your company's profile uh, to schedule the interviews and I was a bit fascinated because the data is the fuel and you guys are working on that. So Michael, can you please tell me more about yourself? I'm the general manager of, uh, for global business unit of the company, yeah. So guys, I just want to start with the, the quick rapid fire questions. Uh, the first question it's in my mind is, how you guys address the biased issue while training the data? So what your company can do for that kind of a stuff? Because it's very important right now that the data is getting hallucinated a lot and there are a lot of uh, things happening across the industry that uh, the financial data and healthcare data should not have a, a complex uh, implementations. Yeah, so uh, generally speaking, I think the most important thing for us is about uh, uh, to make sure the diversity of the, our data. And uh, for example, if we provide our data sets or data collection service to our clients, we need to have a design, a better design of the uh, diversity of the data sets to ensure that uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, diverse, diverse uh, data uh, coverage for all kinds of uh, uh, demographics. And uh, for example, if we have uh, how to um, create a data set for speech recognition, we need to considering consider the coverage of different gender, ages, and uh, also the dialect, and also a different region. Yeah. Yeah. My second question is, what you think about the data privacy and security while building the LLMs? Because following the industry standards are very important, like a responsible AI and all for safe and secure. Yeah, the data security is also very important for us. And, uh, you know, yeah, since the GDPR uh, comes out and, yes, a lot of the seems kind of law or regulation in different countries uh, since we have our global business all over the world so and we have to apply all of them and uh, we have our uh, internal like we have a dpo team and we have our uh, legal team to help us to make sure we uh, align with all the laws and regulation in different countries when we conduct our project in different countries and also you know the privacy like is very very important especially for the individuals so we will make sure all of the, our data sets have a uh, grand uh, constant form for each individual who contribute their data so that uh, it will help also to solve the concern from our clients because they also very worry about this thing, this kind of things because they are also all huge giant tech and they, they can't afford if there something like this happens then maybe they can get sued for, yeah and lose lots of money yeah so 
So Michael, how the organization can focus on the data-driven development by utilizing the proper resources? Uh, yeah, actually it's a big challenge for uh, both us and our clients, I think. And uh, I think for, uh, to make, I mean, to, to, to collect the data more e e efficiently, and uh, uh, I think we need to uh, use our uh, actually, we are not just collect data or annotate data. We also use the uh, AI algorithm who we contribute uh, with our data to help us to manage our data collection and uh, annotation better and more efficiently. Because you know the the, the cost, uh, you know, is, is much higher. Because you know that the human cost is will be much higher uh, year by year. So we we need to figure out a solution to help us to uh, collect data and annotate data more efficiently and uh, less expensively. And that will help us to expand our business and help our client to uh, save their cost and uh, get their data timely, yeah. This is the next question. How you manage your client's data? Do you analyze something out of that? Not, uh, we, we are not doing the uh, data analyze. Yeah. We are doing the data. Uh, it's it's um, it appears like audio, uh, speech, text, and uh, uh, image, okay. and uh, we tag tag them, such as like uh, when a pic take picture of you. And it will um, tag that you have glasses, glasses you have hair, uh, yeah, yeah uh, black hair, and uh, shirt, yeah, like that. So that's what we did. So my next question is, what are the different challenges that you consider while implementing the AI into existing SaaS products? Yeah, I think for now the big biggest challenge is that uh, as a development of AI, we need more and more data, uh, not only just for the volume and also for the quality. You know, for the ChatGPT, actually. So you mean that structuring of a data is important? Yeah, very, very, very important. For for example, maybe if if we just label something like uh, uh, to recognize if this is a cat or a dog or something like uh, this is a human with different ages. It's easier for ordinary people to to label it, but while uh, we need some uh, domain knowledge, we need to have expert on it to help us to 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 label the data. Sometimes we even how to find people with a degree of master or even PhD on some uh, specific domain. Outsource or in-house development? Yes, l large language models is very very good, and uh, all the people are using it, but. It doesn't mean every company need to uh, develop a large language model, right? Yeah. So, Michael, what do you think about responsible AI in enterprise level? In one hand, I think uh, uh, we need to pay more attention to the sensitive data, and uh, we need to uh, comply with uh, uh, law and uh, uh, provide the data. How the data ocean focus on quality and security of data? Yeah, but from our company, we will follow our uh, like the local law and to compliance to make the data more high quality and uh, efficiency. How do you see the rise of a synthetic data impacting the demand of real world data sets? Are you talking about synthetic data? Yes, real world data sets versus synthetic data. Yeah, I, I think synthetic data is very important because. Uh, Actually, you, you, you don't have enough real-world data uh, for some reason, like uh, uh, sometimes the real-world data is hard to uh, collect. Uh, for example, like uh, autonom uh, autonomous driving, uh, there are some extreme, we extreme weather or accidents. Uh, you 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 can you can collect data. <laughs> you 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 pay this cost to collect such kind of data. So how enterprise people can connect with you to avail your services? Yeah, we have LinkedIn uh, as well as uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, as well as the website. Uh, yeah, YouTube.
So Mike, Helen, Helen, I'm really appreciate about your time and thanks for joining and sharing your valuable insights about the data and the future of AI. Really appreciate. Have a good day.